Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 58 of the Cloud Computing Australia show which is featured on YouTube and a podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, Cloud Computing Recruitment Specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. This week we are excited to have James Staten back on our show as our special guest. James is the Vice President and Principal Analyst at Forrester Research and James is a cloud expert with over 20 years experience in marketing, business development, corporate strategy and cloud-based innovations. In this week's show we are talking about that in the modern era of digital transformation and agility it is incredibly important that enterprises and government agencies prioritize driving market innovations that create new customer values and address market shortcomings. Hi Dave and James, a warm welcome to you both. It's exciting to have you back on the Australia show this week. It's great to be here and it's great to have James on, man. Yeah, great to be with both of you. This is always such a great show. Yeah, it's great to have you back on, James. I think we worked out just off camera that it's almost been, uh, I think, just under a year or something since uh, the last time we had you on. So, yeah, thanks for joining us. Always love having you on the shows. Oh, yeah. So good to be a part of this because you guys are not looking at the history of cloud. You're helping people take greater advantage of it. Yeah, exactly right. And we try our best uh, every week to come up with some great content. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good fun. We, we enjoy doing it and uh, we're building that little network and building that community and, and, you know, giving that content out there, which I think is really, really important. So thanks, James. I know you're a fan of the show as well, which is, which, you know, is, is uh, near and dear to, you know, Dave, Dave and, uh, and myself's heart. So <laughs> thank you for all your, uh, all your support. It's been fantastic. So look, let's open the show with a question then. What is the best way to pursue this uh, innovation and how do you see Australia currently leveraging the cloud computing for the tech driven innovations, James? Yeah, the best thing is to really focus first and foremost on customer experience. What are your customers struggling with today? What are they looking to accomplish? What are things that you could do from a technology perspective that would create new values, create new services, create new capabilities, and potentially overcome some of the things that hold them back from getting to what they're really trying to accomplish? Uh, and that's what companies all across the globe are starting to focus on and starting to rise up the importance of innovation efforts. Um, and once you identify what is it the customers are looking for, be prepared to iterate that solution. And through that iteration, realize your first idea probably won't be right and you'll need to iterate it. And so you have to embrace fast failure to achieve that, which means that you have to ensure that the way you pursue this is one in which you're not locking yourself into multi-year contracts with a bunch of vendors. You're doing it in a way that allows you to do fast failure, do iterations and do changes so that you can achieve what the customer is really looking for through a series of fast failures and minimum viable product iterations. What are your thoughts on that, uh, Dave? There's some great content there, James, and uh, I think you're absolutely spot on. No, absolutely spot on. I couldn't disagree with anything there. I, I think the, really the innovation effort is the ability to kind of take technology, including cloud computing, but certainly edge computing and IoT and all the other stuff that's popping up and weaponize it for the business, be able to punch above your weight. And so if you look at really why we're in this, we're really in this to, in essence, change our business around the way in which we deal with innovation. And so. Ultimately, if you look at the technologies and the companies that are defining kind of the next generation, it's really around the ability to change things and create things that haven't been there before. And that, that's a very tough and courageous thing to do because it's very easy. And I talk, talk about this all the time at Deloitte and, uh, and within my customer base and things like that. The fact of the matter is, is that it's easy to really kind of replicate what other people are doing, but it's very hard in order, it's very hard to go out there and actually create kind of a net new technology, a net new approach, net new processes. And as James said, it's gonna take lots of different failures before you're able to succeed once, but that success will really kind of take your business to the next level. So you have to be have the courage to go out there and do it. Yeah, and I'm so glad that you brought that up because our surveys and market research shows exactly what you said. Most companies, when they claim to be innovating, they are actually doing incremental improvements to their existing products, or they are responding to a digital disruptor who already came into their market. And I'd love to say that most companies are responding to those digital disruptors quickly, but no, they typically wait until that disruptor has started to majorly impact their market, and then they finally respond. And if that's gonna be your strategy, be prepared to be number two or number three in that market. Yeah, I would say it can be it can be reactionary at all. And so, in other words, if you're going to be reactionary in the marketplace, 
you're going to have to understand that you're going to, in essence, uh, um, you know, take second or third place at the most, and you're going to end up failing. So there's no Uber, you know, there's no, uh, you know, fourth place Uber in the business. There's no fourth place Netflix. Um, you know, even though people would claim that they're a Netflix killer or an Uber killer coming into the market, the reality is, is once they have and innovated into the market, they in essence own the market. And so what you need to do is understand that it's if it's already introduced in the market, then you don't need to be there. You need to basically basically create things that are don't exist and really kind of take the company to the next level, which means that you're doing something that most companies can't do, the ability to kind of create a net new technology, the ability to kind of create a net new strategy, you know, to help take things to the next level. And it's a very difficult thing to do. One of the things I, I, I have a, a tendency of, um, you know, getting upset about, if we're talking about something that somebody else is talking about, I don't care. I don't want to talk about it. I want to talk about something that's new in the market, that's, that's innovative, that's exciting, that really kind of changes things and takes things to the next level. It may be completely wrong. I mean, I'm wrong all the time. But the thing is, I just have to be right a few times in order to be successful in the space. And, and people have to understand that, you know, if you deal with cloud computing and IoT and all the kind of the new buzzwordy technology that's out there, those are in essence weapons that you're going to take into battle and your ability to, in essence, utilize those weapons in the right form in the right way and basically create augmentations out of that. They're going to be new in the market are, are going to be your ability to be successful. And I think that organizations really don't understand that. I talked about in um, uh, a blog I wrote a, a month ago about the brand apocalypse. I truly think that a lot of these major brands are going to be displaced in the next five to 10 years. I think that a lot of the things we've dealt with on the daily basis in terms of name brand, household names are eventually just going to go away because they're going to be disrupted. And the only way for them to disrupt the disruptors is, is to be disruptive unto themselves. And I'm not sure they have the innovation and courage to make that happen. What do yeah. you think, James? And that's great. And you're tying into one of my initial initial research reports that Forrester was focused on is that first off, you don't just want to do one innovation at a time because these things often take time to do and you have to make iterations to them, which might change their what they're focused on and where they're going. Um, what you need to have instead is an innovation portfolio. And in that portfolio, yes, you want to incrementally improve your existing products. And yes, you need to respond to digital disruptors. But as you said, don't just respond. Be prepared to add your assets, add your capabilities so that you're disrupting the value they brought. But then more importantly, exactly to your point, the three other categories of innovations you should be focusing on are where you are the disruptor. And the first of those is to bring out a net new value to your existing customers that they have never experienced and never thought was possible, um, and that delivers a new value that's complementary to what you have today. But it could potentially also be disruptive to your existing products. And it's much better to disrupt yourself than to be disrupted by someone else who takes your revenue away from you. This, the next category is adjacent market disruptions. Take a look at the services and capabilities that you have, and are there additional markets that you currently do not provide them to that with a digital implementation of them could create a new value for them? Good example of that is what Uber has done to move beyond simply the taxi business. Uber Health is something that doctors and hospitals can use to ensure their patients get to their appointments on time. Uber Eats is a way for those drivers to not just be filled with passengers, but to pick up food for those passengers and drop it off to them. And then the last area of innovation that we highly recommend that companies pay attention to is moonshots. Innovations that are not looking at your customers' current problems, but are looking at the emerging changes in their lives, in their markets, um, and in their needs that you can address by the time they come to market which means these types of innovations might take three to 10 years to do, might take huge degrees of iterations to go forward. But if you look at what defines our lives today, a lot of the things that we count on today and that we love were moonshots. Some good examples, the iPhone, the laptop, and we talked about Uber, and there are a tremendous amount of other innovations that define who we are today, and probably the one that even your grandparents could relate to, the automobile. Because in the early, early days of the automobile, in the early 1900s, 
98% of people that went to town did it in a, in a vehicle pulled by a horse. And just eight years later, 95% of the people went to there in a car. And the other thing that's really important for everyone to focus on is, as I mentioned before, you have to be able to be comfortable with the failures of your initial iterations and move on to different variations of that. Um, and as you mentioned, you need to not just be taking advantage of existing technologies, but you need to be tapping into emerging technologies because a lot of the emerging technologies may not be ready yet, but they are breaking ground into new areas and they are creating these new values and new capabilities. And a fast and efficient way for all companies to move down this innovation pathway is to build these solutions on the public clouds. Because in addition to the services that, that everyone thinks of that they provide and containers and virtual machines and storage and networking and all that, most of the mega clouds also have most of the major um, emerging technologies available on their platforms as well at the same per hour pricing models that they use for everything else. And so if I need to build something you know, that takes advantage of cryptocurrency models, for example, I can go onto Azure and I can tr try that out right then and there. And if it's not working, I can walk away from that cryptocurrency and the bill stops right then and there. So James, what would be your advice to people in Australia for um, having the courage in essence to change their culture to start moving in this, moving this way? Is it gonna take the brand apocalypse where they see the destruction of other brands around them so they get scared and kind of act, act accordingly? Or is this gonna be um, you know, something that can be changed internally going forward? Well, you are going to have some internal blockers who are very focused on the tactical aspects of your business. That is for sure, and that is common everywhere. What you need to be able to do is show that your efforts and innovation are not meant to hurt our tactical business, but they're meant to prepare us for market leadership in the future. And every company needs to think about this and add it to the changes to their culture that we've already seen that you guys have talked about quite a bit about Australian companies who have had a history oftentimes of being a fast follower to the United States and in some cases to Europe as well. And they're now saying, no, let's take advantage of these technologies ourselves and let's build net new values for our customers and let's disrupt those countries. And that's exactly what the focus needs to be. So, um, Brad, you live in Australia, so you agree with that? Yeah, no, yeah, James, absolutely right. I think we've uh, spot on, and look, you know, I think there's a bit of a time lag at the moment on the on the call, but uh, we'll we'll work our uh, we'll work to our best to uh, work around that. Uh, but yeah, no, absolutely right, and and yeah, like like you said, James, Dave and I have spoke and spoken on many many occasions about the culture in Australia and the you know the um, the attentiveness of understanding where the world's going in a in a tech world and almost second guessing what we need to bring to it to innovate. And I think that's what Australia does a lot of things. Uh, you know, fantastically. In fact, a little a little uh, fact out there that's uh, that's tech driven. That's uh, that's quite a big thing. Is that Australia actually invented the black box? So the flight black box was invented by Australia, just to name one thing that was invented by Australia that not many people knew about. So uh, I was going to do a Michael Caine impersonation then, but refrained uh, refrained from that. But not a lot of people knew that. Um, and so uh, it, it's one of those little things. Australia is always innovating, like the first uh, uh, electric, electronic pacemaker and things like that, that, that are life changing, not only for individuals, but also from a, a game changer point of view for the rest of the world as well. So although from a, you know, um, a population point of view, it's very small, demographically huge, uh, what we offer to the world, I think, is significant. Uh, uh, and certainly from a technological point of view as well, we're coming up with some really innovative ideas which are, are getting implemented on a global scale. Uh, it's only recent, actually, that Alibaba uh, and the Australia Post Office have now teamed up in order to get some courses together uh, for local businesses to be able to benefit from Alibaba. So um, I think Dave and I spoke last week about um, Google coming in and training and running free courses and jumping off the back of Azure and Amazon. So there's a lot of innovation going on, and I think it is really exciting. Uh, and it leads us on nicely, actually, James, doesn't it? Because we're doing the um, innovation show. 
uh, and we're launching that this week, which we're really excited about. So all three of us are going to do uh, these these innovation shows, which is really cool. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of buzz going on in Australia. It's really it's really an exciting place to be from a tech cultural point of view and what the innovations are. So you know, I think it's um, yeah, watch this space. It's going to be fantastic. And and James, you know, just to sort of close up the show, if we can, uh, have you got any sort of three top tips around innovation and, and disruption and, and what your thoughts will be around that? Well, the key thing is, um, as we talked about, be the disruptor. Um, and the best way to do that is to identify the breadth of ideas you should consider. And the key thing key main main way to achieve that is to build out an ideation program across your entire employee base including your ecosystem and potential partners they that way you will be exposed to all the ideas from all the people who are interacting with all of your customers in various ways and will be able to identify things you may not have been able to find any other way and once you have the ideations going then you want to go down a shark tank path where you have your executives and your leaders of your innovation effort, take a look at the ideas that have been brought forth and figure out which ones align to your company mission, which ones you really should invest in now and in which ways so that they fit into your portfolio because you don't wanna just invest in the ideas they come up with that you could deliver in six weeks. You wanna also include the things that'll cost multiple years to get there. Um, and then as you start to move these things forward, don't worry about a business plan for the individual ideas until you have been able to achieve validation of the MVP of these solutions from the targeted customers. Then you can build the business case because you have verification that they're interested in this and you can make the, the assumptions about what other customers are also interested in this, which sales teams should be activated to bring this forward, and if none of ours, do it through a partner or do it through a startup. And then once we get it going into the market, then we can start judging the implementation of this like we typically would with a business plan. Yeah, fantastic there, Dave. Uh, James, sorry. Uh, and, and Dave, do you have any final thoughts on this at all? <laughs> no, it's spot on. I mean, ultimately, I think this is about your ability to have courage in the marketplace and, uh, and do things that are very different. And it's tough, to, tough for companies to do because they're used to doing things that are orderly and been proven other places. And, you know, people like to follow the leaders in the space. And this is basically contrary to that. And so, but I do see uh, a big falling out in the Australian market and pretty much all the most of the markets all over the world with uh, the market normalizing itself around innovation. People are able to do things better, whether it's building cars or, you know, taxi services or, you know, uh, streaming movies or building houses you know, things like that, that everything's going to be disrupted the next 10 years. And so ultimately have to prepare for that and be a disruptor unto yourself. And that's a tough thing to do. And I am super excited about the kind of disruptions we're not just seeing in Australia, but that we're also seeing in New Zealand. And in New Zealand, the three companies, Rocket Labs, Fleet Space Technologies, and a U.S. agency known as NASA are all investing together on a moonshot to get us back to the moon. Wow, watch this space. I think we saved that for the innovation show, chaps. What do you think? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Excellent. Well, look, guys, I can't thank you both enough to, for your time on your uh, Sunday in the uh, East Coast and West Coast. It's been fantastic. And, uh, you know, James, thanks for being part of the Australia show again this week. You bet. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. And Dave, as always, thank you, sir. Thanks for your time. It's always a pleasure. Good having James here. Absolutely. Uh, and thanks everyone for watching this week's show. We hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, look, all the details are down below for the social media. So you can get James on Twitter, which is at Staten7. Uh, David's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're on Instagram, Facebook, obviously LinkedIn. So connect with us there as well, which is awesome. Uh, remember to like, subscribe to the channel, which is fantastic and comment and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and remember, David writes some exclusive blogs for us as well. So all the links are down below in the description box. Thanks for watching and until next week.